Good evening, everyone. Welcome to this evening's youth session live. And as we get into our activities, I'm going to welcome Sister Samantha James, who will be doing the devotional exercise. Good evening, everyone. Welcome again to yet another youth week, our fifth night. And so far, it has been a blessing all week. I would just want to give God thanks and praises for his goodness towards us. Bless the name of Jesus. I'll be starting by singing this song, Welcome Holy Spirit, we are in your presence. Bless God. Welcome Holy Spirit. We are in your presence. Fill us with your power. Live inside of me. Welcome Holy Spirit. We are in your presence. Fill us with your power, live inside of me. You're the living water, never drying fountain, comforter and counselor. Take complete control. Welcome, Holy Spirit. We are in your presence. Fill us with your power. Live inside of me. You're the living water, never drying fountain, comforter and counselor. Take complete control. Welcome, Holy Spirit. We are in your presence. Fill us with your power. Live inside of me. Welcome, Holy Spirit. We are in your presence. Fill us with your power, live inside of me. Fill us with your power, live inside of me. Bless the name of Jesus. Glory to God. Indeed, we want to welcome the Holy Spirit in our personal space, in our lives. And we just want to adore him, we want to magnify him and give him praises due unto his name. So at this time, where we are, we are going to place ourselves before the Lord. Glory to God. Father, we want to thank you tonight. Thank you for your mercies. Thank you for your love, God. Thank you. Father, for your grace that is given unto us. Lord, we want to lift ourselves before you, Lord, as we invite you in our homes, as we invite you in our hearts. Mighty God, we pray, God, that you will abide with us as we lift up your name and we give you thanks tonight, God. Take full control. Take glory, honor, and praise in your precious holy name. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Bless your name. I just want to be where you are, dwelling daily in your presence, and I don't want to worship from afar. 
Draw me near to where you are. Lord, I want to be where you are. Dwelling in your presence. And feasting at your table. Surrounded by your glory. In your presence. And that's where I always want to be. I just want to be with you. I just want to be where you are. Dwelling daily in your presence. And I don't want to worship from afar. Draw me near to where you are. Lord, I want to be where you are. Dwelling in your presence. And feasting at your table. Surrounded by your glory in your presence. That's where I always want to be. I just want to be with you. For in your presence, that's where I always want to be. I just want to be with you. Bless the name of Jesus. Indeed, in his presence, that's where we always want to be. Glory to God. At this time, our scripture reading will be taken from John 15. And I'll be reading from verses 1 to 8. John 15, verses 1 to 8. Glory to God. Here beginning. I am the true vine, and my father is the husband man. Every branch in me that bear not fruit, he taketh away. And every branch that beareth fruit, he purgeth it that it may bring forth more fruit. Now he clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. Abide in me and I in you, as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, except it abide in the vine. No more can he, except he abide in me. I am the vine, he are the branches. He that abideth in me and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit, for without me, he cannot do nothing. If a man abide not in me, he is cast forth as a branch and is withered. And men gather them and cast them into the fire and they are burned. If he abide in me and, I, and my words abide in you, he shall ask what he will and it shall be done unto you. It and ask. Herein is my Father glorified that he bear much fruit, so shall he be my disciples. Amen to the word of God. Indeed, we ought to abide in the true vine, which is Christ. If we are going to remain stable in this unstable world, we have to abide in the true vine. Bless the name of Jesus. At this time, I'm going to ask Evangelist Jackson to pray for the rest of service and for each and every youth that is here on our platform. Bless the Lord. Hallelujah. Oh, we bless your name, Jesus. We glorify you, we lift you up, we exalt you, we magnify you. You are God and above you there is none other. Father, we want to thank you for life. We want to thank you, God, that you have spared us throughout this day. 
many are not this privileged, Lord. There are so many that were here today and they are not here now. But God, we thank you, Lord Jesus, that you are still, we are still here in the land of the living. Father, we ask even now that you will touch us individually, Lord God, and collectively. I pray for every youth. I pray for every person, mighty God, on the platform and otherwise. Lord, I pray, God, that your people will be stable in an, in an unstable world. Hallelujah, when so many things are happening around us, that God, we will not lose our focus, mighty God, but we will keep steadfast on you, not looking to the left nor to the right, but to look steadfast, mighty God. Father, we pray even now that you will have your way in our lives, that God, we will take the word, we will apply it to our lives, we will write it upon the plates of our hearts. Lord Jesus, we will we, we will just abide in your word, Lord, because God, if we abide in your word and you abide in us, then God, we will be stable. Father, we pray even now that you will just take the rest of tonight's proceedings, hallelujah, and that you will be glorified. Whatever is said and done here tonight, you will get the glory because you give your you, you give your glory to none other. So tonight, God, we ask that you will glorify yourselves among yourself among us. Hallelujah. As we look to you for direction, as we look to you for counsel, as we look to you, Lord, that oh God, our ears will be open, our eyes will be open that God, we will know your voice. T turn your attention to us tonight, Lord Jesus. Let your ears be attentive to your people. Father, we leave everything in your hands, Lord God, and we ask that you will take over now. In Jesus' name we pray, amen and amen. amen. Thank you, Lord. Praise the Lord, amen. Thank you, Evangelist Jackson. And at this time, I'm going to ask that Candice Murray She'll be singing a hymn for us, and after which she'll be making us welcome. And the hymn will be hymn 420. My hope is built on nothing else. Bless the name of Jesus. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Praise God. My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest rain, but wholly lean on Jesus' name. On Christ the solid rock I stand. All of the ground is sinking sand. All of the ground is sinking sand. When darkness seems to veil his face, I rest on his unchanging grace. In every high and stormy gale, my anchor holds within the veil. On Christ the solid rock I stand. All is sinking sand. All other ground is sinking sand. His oath is covenant and blood. Support me in the whelming flood. When all around my soul gives way, he then is all my hope and stay. On Christ the solid rock I stand, all of the ground is sinking sand. 
the ground is sinking sand. On Christ the solid rock I stand. All of the ground is sinking sand. All of the ground is sinking sand. All of the ground is Hallelujah, praise God. Praise be to God. Hallelujah. Surely all of the ground is sinking sand, and Christ is the only foundation that has been laid that cannot be shaken and will never be shaken, no matter how the world is, no matter how unstable the world gets. He remains the same yesterday, today, and forever. We can depend on him, on, upon him. We can rest upon him because he remains he remain sure and steadfast. The anchor that really holds in, the, in spite of the storm. Praise be to God. I extend welcome to everyone here to our youth convention or youth week where we celebrate on the theme, youth maintaining stability in an unstable world. I extend welcome to everyone in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, in the name of the Holy Ghost, the Christian outreach missionary evangelism under the auspices of the Holy Spirit and under the leadership of Bishop Albert Roy West. At this time, we acknowledge none other than our leader, Bishop Albert West in Jesus' name. Come and give a little round of applause for him. Bless be to God, praise the Lord. We acknowledge his wife, Sister Olive West as well. We acknowledge Pastor Poiser, who's the pastor of the Arnold Road Branch. We acknowledge Pastor Sonia Wright, who's a pastor of the Harbor Heights branch. We also acknowledge our Reverend Coleman and Mr. Coleman who are with us tonight. Praise be to God. We also acknowledge our director, youth director, none other than Sister Shereen Harris. Praise be to God. Give it up for the woman of God this, this evening. Praise be to God. We acknowledge also our youth leaders in the persons of Sister Colleen Williams and Sister Nashara Ellis. We also like to acknowledge all the members on the youth committee we we thank god for them and we praise we pray continually for them that they remain in christ and keep pressing on the upward way praise to god i acknowledge all our viewers on the facebook platform our youth our zoom platform and even our, our youtube platform we thank you for joining us we thank you that you're able to be here with us and we pray that you will reap from what we have sown tonight Surely it has been a good week, an edifying week, an encouraging week. And we are encouraged that, yes, we can remain stable in this unstable society, in this unstable world. As long as we hold on to Jesus, hold on to his word, trust in him, and do what he says. Yes, we can remain stable. So enjoy our fellowship. Enjoy tonight's proceedings. And may you be blessed in Jesus' name. God bless you. Amen. Hand over back to our moderator. Amen. Bless the Lord. Amen. Thank you, Sister Candice. At this time, I'll be taking two testimonies. Glory to God. So feel free to share your testimony tonight. Shall we bless the Lord? Hallelujah. We, I want to give God thanks for life. You know, the, on Christ the solid rock I stand tonight because no other um, rock I can stand on, only Christ. And tonight I give him praise and honor and glory knowing that I am still here and he's still providing, he's still protecting, he's still keeping me. So I just want to give him all the glory and all the honor because it's no strength of my own. I have no strength without God. And tonight, I just want to give him all the glory, the honor, the praise, adoration, and everything that is due unto my God. He is my hope and stay, and on him, I can depend. You pray my strength, because I mean well, in Jesus' name. Amen. Bless the Lord. One more. Yes, tonight, I have to give God thanks. I'm not really one to, to really reflect on past activities 
But knowing the God that we serve, I'm just going kind of give you a glimpse. And I really took a look back and saw three occasions when I should have been dead. Three separate occasions. So tonight I really have to give God thanks. I thank him for life and life abundantly. It is nothing, nothing good that I have done. Why I'm still alive today. Because I'm not, I wasn't living a perfect life. But thank God, I can say today that I'm a sinner saved by grace. And I have to continue to live for God. I have to continue to give praises and adoration to our Savior. And I just ask you all to just pray for me. Because I mean well. In Jesus' name. Bless the Lord. Any more testimonies? Sister oh. Alicia Walla, you want to share a testimony tonight? I too want to give God thanks for the gift of salvation. You know, looking back who I was and where I'm coming from, I'm giving God thanks tonight. I want to give God thanks for my church, for my bishop, you know, one who really teaches us the word. Sometimes we don't take it so well, but I really want to give God thanks for a shepherd of such, you know, who teach the word, the undiluted word. And I really want to give God thanks for this week, youth week, and the team, you know, it have me really looking in myself, in really praying much, asking God to help me, because indeed we have to remain stable in this unstable world. You know, so I'm just giving God thanks, thanking him for the gift of salvation, thanking him for his grace, his mercy, his love, and thanking him for life. Bless the Lord. Any more testimonies? Well, I thank you, God, thanks for his goodness toward me. I thank him too for salvation. It really makes a difference, and it really gives you a sense of identity. You know, when you have Christ as your foundation, Christ as your center, and Christ to really hold you, you know, it really gives you a sense of stability, a sense of identity, and a really, a real, a real sense of knowing that you are okay. You will be great. You'll be fine. No matter what is happening, God will take care of you. You can be assured in this uncertain time that the Lord will take care of you. So, you know, I thank God that he has taught me his word. And even the word that says, be anxious for nothing. And when we are not anxious and we pray, surely his peace, which passes all understanding. So I really thank him for his peace that has preserved my mind in such a time like this, because it's only really trusting in him that has kept me thus far. So I just come to prepare my strength as I mean to go on in Jesus and to keep holding on by his grace. God bless you. Praise God. Bless the Lord. So Keith Bentley, you want to share a testimony tonight? Praise the Lord. I would love to share. <laughs> Praise God. I just want to give God thanks for his ever-ending love towards my life. I want to thank him that he has kept me alive through it all, through the ups and downs, through everything. He has been merciful unto me. And I just want to thank him for that love, for that grace, for that mercy that kept me going. You know, I wouldn't be here now if he hadn't given me life, you know, put that life in my body, that I could be on this platform to say that. And I'm really, really, really thankful when I look back over my life and see where he have taken me from until this very moment. And, you know, I just want to thank him that he continue to give me grace within me that I can hold on to his word and to the family around me, my church family around and about me. 
I just want to thank him for that. You know, I just want to thank him for that wonderful love. And I want to thank God for all, all of us on the platform. We are a wonderful set of people and we just need to continue to love each other and to stay focused in God and he will carry us through everything. Bless his holy name. Just continue to pray my strength as I really mean well in Jesus' name. Bless the Lord. At this time, I'll hand over to... Bless the you? Lord. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. All right. Truly, I have to give God thanks. I am not saying that it has been easy, but I'm giving God thanks for the journey, this Christian life. You know that he has taught me a lot. He has bring me a mighty, mighty long way. I can't complain because God has been so good to me. My life, I am a walking testimony. It is not me. It is not anything good that I have done, but it's only because of his grace and mercy why I am here tonight. It's only because of God. I didn't do anything special, but God chose me for a reason. He chose me for a purpose. And I am going to stand in his purpose no matter what. I really have to give God thanks tonight for bringing me through all the pandemic that has been going on. I can't say that I have physically have any challenge because God has always shown up for me. And for that, I am grateful. I am very, very grateful tonight. Bless you all. Bless the Lord. At this time, I'm going to hand over to our sister, Shireen. Yes, ma'am. So Shireen, yes. Yes, at this time I'm going to hand over to our sister Shireen. Okay, good night, everyone. Welcome, welcome to our youth night. We have dubbed it Youth Issues Live, our virtual edition, of course. And we are here to discuss issues relevant to the theme and relevant to what's happening in the lives of young people. Now, our host tonight is none other than our sister, Nardia Bentley, and she will be, I'll be handing over to her in a moment. But I just want everyone to, you are free to give your views as well, and to just be blessed and to leave here learning something, learning from another person's experience. So enjoy the rest of your night and God bless you. And now send you on over to the host, Sister Nordia. Good night, Bridget. Thank you, Sister Aris. Welcome to Youth Issues Live. I am your host, Sister Nordia Bentley. It promised to be fun, educating and fulfilling. I hope you are ready. Let me go ahead and introduce you to tonight's panelists. Our panelists for tonight is brother and sister Bell. Put your hands together and make them welcome. You know, we have the clap icon. So if you can't use your, your platform to send up the clap icon, I want you to put your hands together. Yes, make them welcome. Thank you, brother and sister Bell. Then we have sister Dean and evangelist Tolonge. Come on, make them welcome. Um, sister Candace Murray, sister Shereen Aris. Sister Sakoya Graf Watson, Sister Kayan Fuller, Sister Amelia Bryan, Sister Colleen Williams, Sister Daniela Palmer, and Brother Larry. Great. Um, put your hands together for our panelists tonight, please. Thank you very much. I'm going to start off with Brother and Sister Bell. I'm going to ask you to introduce yourself to the congregation and say one thing that you like about each other. Hi, uh, good night, brethren. Mm -hmm. uh, it has been a very, very, very wonderful journey. Mm -hmm. um, well, for those who didn't know, my name is brother Lequin Ronaldo Bell, and this is sister Cara Amelia Bell. We got married 
year before last. So we recently celebrated our first anniversary. Looking forward to the second one um, on the 29th of November. Mm-hmm. And what I like about her. First and foremost, she's very God-fearing. Mm-hmm. Very, very God-fearing. She has a passion for praising God. Trust me. She be at church, she be able to sing. <laughs> when they get the mic, but trust me, you know them. Into a community era, <laughs> but um, apart from that, everything else, everything else, she's very wonderful to be around, and I thank God for her every day. Every Lovely. day. Lovely, beautiful brother, Sister Bella. Good night, everyone. My name is Cara Bell, as I have said before. Um, what do I like about my husband is that well, both like and dislike. He's very, very laid back. Very laid back. If you don't ask him nothing, you won't know nothing. So, but otherwise, it's it's fun getting to know him, getting um to know what he's like and what he's not like. So I kind of embrace it all. And the fact that he's very caring. So yeah. Very good. But sister Talange. You're up next. Introduce yourself and tell us one thing about you that nobody else on the platform knows. Sister Talange? Repeat me, please. Sorry about that. You were saying? Um, turn on your camera, introduce yourself to the congregation, and tell us one thing about you that nobody on the platform will know. Good night, all. First, let me apologize. I'm unable to turn my camera this time. Where am I? Can't do so right now. It's not um, platform friendly. Yeah. Um, my name is Sister Tolange. I am from Linstead. There are several things you guys don't know about me, but I guess to start off with, I'm a Maroon. My mom's Syrian, my dad's a Maroon, so a mixture of that as well. I am the third daughter of four girls. They're only females in my immediate family. Apart from my dad, straight females in my immediate family. So most persons don't know that about me. And that's basically it. Very good, lovely. As well as I love pork. You love pork. Me too. Yes. Yes. I like pork. Um, Evangelist Talange, over to you. Introduce yourself to the congregation and tell us the food that you despise most and why. Hi, good night, brethren, brothers, sisters, and everyone else that is viewing on the platform. I am Evangelist Richard Tullinch. Uh, um, one food that I despise. There's hardly anything that I despise, you know. I've always been the one in my house that eats everything. Cersei, you know, things that others wouldn't like, like the Cersei tea, the bitters, you know, these kind of things. I am the one that goes for everything. So I can't um, pinpoint anything to say that I don't eat this or I don't eat that. Yeah, man. So you're a foodie? Okay. Yes, I'm a foodie. Okay. All right, over to you, Sister Candice. Can you introduce yourself to the congregation and tell us one thing that you have learned in this pandemic that you hold there to. All right, good night everyone. Uh, my name is Candice Mori. I am, I, one of the things I, I held, I've held dear, held dear to in this pandemic is that God is faithful. God is truly faithful. He is able to preserve, he's able to protect, and he's able to provide. 
especially the fact that, you know, from last year, well, now that it has changed, thanks be to God, but as, as I have testified on many occasions, um, since COVID came in, the employers slashed our, 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 our pay. But since then, God is good, I've gained weight. And, you know, I have not, you know, I have still, my family's fed. I am fed. I can pick shoes and feel the same way. So God is still good. So I, I prove that God is really faithful. And that's one thing I can really say I've held dear to, to in this time and age. Yes, I have gained weight. I am now over 100 pounds. And it's a miracle. It's it's under, over 105. I've never seen that before. But God is an awesome God. Bless the Lord. Give her a cup, Virgin. She's gaining some meat. Yay! Welcome to the real world. Sister Aris, over to you, my darling. Introduce yourself to the congregation and tell us what you love most about being a youth leader. Wow. Okay, good evening again, everyone. I am Shereen Harris. What I love the most about being a youth leader is I think it's seeing persons move from the level that they're at to higher levels. It's watching them grow from strength to strength. For instance, you may have one that's very shy. And when you watch them over the years growing and developing into men and women who are more outspoken and more upfront, that is something to really feel good about. So yes, I like seeing young people grow and mature and do great things for God. Yes. Amen. Lovely, lovely. I love that response. Over to you, Sister Graf Watson. Introduce yourself to the platform and tell us what you love most about being married. <laughs> Ah, uh, good night, all. My name is Sakoya Graf Watson. Uh, what? A, no, there was a question. Um, having someone that you can really just talk to, you know, other than a friend or so, but you have someone who you I can I can even you know build a life with. That's what I like. Very good. Mm -hmm. So you're and, and being able to trust and so on. Lovely, lovely, lovely. Sister Fuller, over to you. Introduce yourself to the congregation and tell them what you love most about being a member of COM. Bless the night. Bless the Lord to each and every one on the platform. Those growing all over the world. My name is not Bond. James Bond, but Charlene Kayon Fuller. <laughs> right. Kayon Fuller. And what I like most about being a member of COM, you guys are all my family. I've been to other churches before and I've never felt this love, this affection and the warmth of the people and I appreciate and I love each and every one of my family members that's at come and all on a good no no me me love money I'm always I sell things so that's me uh, you love that you have a supportive church to support your business all right sister Brian over to you Introduce yourself to the platform and give us as youths. You have been married over seven years, uh, pretty young. So give us as youth one advice that you would advise us as youth in our singleness to do. Good night, everyone. One advice. Your name first, please. Introduce yourself. My name is Amanda Brian. And um, being married for seven years, as you said, almost eight now, one advice is ensure that communication is always there between you and your partner. Communication is key. And another 
just off the head, make sure you say that you want. Make sure you say you want married. Make sure you say you can endure it because it's not an easy road. Yeah. All right. You have heard from the ladies married almost eight years. Wait on God. Sister Colleen Williams, over to you. Introduce yourself to the congregation and tell us what you love most about being a youth leader. <laughs> Good night, everyone. My name is Colleen Williams, I'm youth president and lay preacher. I can't leave that out, that is necessity. Um, wow. As, as sister, then we would say what thing I like as being a youth leader. One is that it exposes me to the different um, personality, different type of individuals that I have to lead, as well as impacting lives because as a youth leader we are here to really guide the youth arm and to really help each other and to carry on the mantle of christ and it is one that once you see lives are being impacted it is something good also you can see whereas others can grow from your guidance and your direction as well as myself being able to grow it helps me to become stable somewhat because if you're not doing things for christ then you are not going to be stable you're all over the place so it gives me so a, a level of, of, of stability as well as seeing lives transform and people growing and really accepting christ very good i like that over to you sister daniela introduce yourself to the congregation and tell us one thing you love about being a part of this church family Good night again, everyone. Um, my name is Daniela Francis. And one thing that I love about being a part of this church is it feels more like a family than a church to me. You know, being that at my church, I'm one of the youngest converts, you know, I thought that, you know, I would feel left out or something, but it's always very welcoming, you know, and everybody, the bond is just there and it makes me feel like family. So that's one thing that I have. You know, we're a family at this church indeed. And our last panelist for tonight is brother Larry Graham. He is from Logwood Church of God, Ground of Truth. He recently got married and he's a youth leader. Mr. Graham, I'm going to ask you to introduce yourself to the congregation and tell us one of the things that challenge you most as a youth leader. Uh, bless the Lord, everybody. Good night. It's such a delight to be with you. Uh, my name is Larry Tajon Graham. Um, one of the things that challenges me most, consistency. Consistency as an, indi as a, um, as, as, as an individual. Um, where, you know, those spiritual stuff are concerned prayer, fasting, and reading the word, it, it is challenging, but at the same time, I found that it is still doable. So it, even though it's challenging, it doesn't mean that I can't, it is still doable. Uh, but God has been faithful, as Sister Candice would have mentioned too, God has been faithful. Yes, yes. All right. Congregation, that's your panelist for tonight. Feel free to raise your hand if you have a question that you want to ask the panelists are uh, posted in the chat. Pastor Poiser will be monitoring the chat and on Facebook. So you go ahead and post your questions and select the panelists that you wish to answer. The question will be asked and a response will be given. With that being said, I'll start off with you, Sister Aris. What does the word stability mean to you as a young Christian? Okay, stability. As a young Christian, I think it means being rooted, being grounded in God, having that foundation that is sturdy. And I mean, we have learned a lot throughout the week, but to me, it comes down to your roots, to your foundation and how you can build on that foundation. To be stable as a youth, it requires you to be focused, to be determined to serve God. You definitely have to make up your mind to serve God. 
And uh, there's so much to say, but I'm just going to try to summarize it. And um, it just means being true to yourself and being true to God. That's, that's my opinion. There's a lot more, but I'll sum it up like that. Okay, so second, if you want to add to that question, not at this time. All right, no problem. Evangelist Tolange, in your own words, what would you say unstable world according to our team means? It's gone. Okay. Um, all right, what I like is that. You know how the Lord worked. We, we sung a song not too long ago. It says, on Christ, the solid rock I stand, all other ground is sinking sand. All other ground is sinking sand. The thing is, the world doesn't embrace our Lord Jesus Christ as Savior. The principles taught by God's words that we hold dear to as Christians is not accepted by the world. Um, you know, the world will see, the, the, you know, Bishop often use an example, you know, where he says the world sees us as stupid, you know, and especially in times when, you know, all hell breaking loose, things are, everything seemingly going wrong I mean, things are not going how you want, but yet still as Christians, we'll find it in us to praise God. We'll find, we'll find it in us to give him thanks. You know, amidst all that's going on, all that's going on around us, as Christians, we find it in us to praise him. And the world doesn't understand this. Okay, um, Job, in Job, when Job lost everything, including his good health. You remember his, what his, his wife said to him. His wife said, curse God and die. Job, Job's response to his wife was that thou speakest as one of the foolish women. That's Job 2.10. And he said that because that is how the world functions. When things are not going home, they want it to go. They curse and murmur and complain. And some would go out of their way to get the things that they want that they don't have. And that makes the world unstable because the world doesn't accept the Christ that we serve. Scripture teaches that there's no other name in Acts 4 verse 12. It says, neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name under the heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. The world rejects this. They reject the God that we serve, the word of God that we hold dear to. They reject it. Hence, we can say the world is unstable. Yes. For the 12 and 13 and 14 years on the platform, that is going to ask you the question Isn't it the uncertainty of COVID whether or not we still can stop wearing masks, we can go out again? Isn't that what, what makes the world unstable now? What would be your response? All right. These, you see, as Christians, the word of God already. No, remember they are not Christians. Yes. Because mm -hmm. we have some on the platform youths that are not saved. So they um when you go mm -hmm. out in the scripture, they don't understand what you are referring to. So what mm -hmm. they are basically saying now is the uncertainty, the new norm. We no longer go out to school face to face. We have to stay home. We have to wear a mask when we go. Out. Isn't this what we are describing as an unstable world? That is a part of it too. That is a part of it too. But it must be said because we as Christians gain our stability by standing on God's word in his promise. So yes, we can say that the world is unstable because 
Tomorrow is uncertain. We don't know what will happen tomorrow. We are here today in our good health and tomorrow, you know, we hear that we have all different kinds of disease and sickness. So yes, it's unstable in that way. But it also must be said that the world is unstable because it doesn't stand on the solid rock of Jesus Christ. It doesn't stand on the foundation of God. And that's what differentiates us from the unsaved. That's what separates us from those who are not saved. I don't know if that, that answers or gives some light to the question. All right, fair enough. Uh, fair enough. Brother Graham, you want to add in your opinion what is unstable world? All right, thank you so much. An unstable world is all of this madness going on around us right now. Um, and you look what, what what happened the other day in in between Israel and Hamas. What is happening in the United States now? As a matter of fact, this month is being celebrated as Pride Month, where the homosexuals are well, the LGBTQ plus um, community celebrating their ideas. And on, but 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 the root of it, as I think Brother Tolland just said is the world's rejection of Jesus Christ. So the word, an unstable world is a world where Jesus Christ as the savior has been rejected. And as a consequence of rejecting Christ, we see all of what is happening now. Um, the whole, you call it, every, every, everybody's woke, the, the woke movement. And, and you and I and us believers who don't support all of those things, we are not woke and we are bigots and we are, we are misogynists and all of these things. Um, so every, every, the, the increase in unrighteousness is what an unstable world looks like, a world that simply rejects Jesus Christ. And let me just greet um, the, the, cleric, the, the leaders of the church. I, I missed that before. So that's what an unstable, is, unstable world is, a world that has rejected Jesus Christ. And if I could just add one thing more, I think Romans 1 speaks to it. Um, when they knew God, they did, they did not... Um, Worship him, worship him as God or something like this, and we're not thankful and the Lord and, and their foolish hearts were darkened and all of these things. And, and that passage, Romans 1, speaks extensively about the apostasy. And that is what we are seeing in the world today, an apostasy. People just decide to say, you know, you people, you choose Jesus. You know, Jesus is not necessary. He, he's just a part of every, he's another philosopher out there. And, and my truth and, that, and that's something we have to contend with today. Everybody's now saying that they have their own truth. So altogether, an unstable world is one that rejects Jesus Christ and therefore rejects truth. That's for me right there. That's for you right there. All right. Very good. Brother and Sister Bell, what habits have you adopted in order to remain stable in Christ? All right. Um, good night again, um, viewers. So far, we have adopted the habits because, well, for those who didn't know, um, we are kids. We are parents of four kids, all boys. And we have one thing in particular we have definitely adopted is prayer meetings with all the kids. Right. Even though the two smaller ones fall asleep most of the time, but <laughs> our nightly prayer meetings is always something to look forward to because um, and the two older boys always have questions. They always seem to ask, um, how you know Jesus loves you? What did he say? And who you would think about, trust me, their little minds are very, very active. And these prayer meetings, they give us a chance to see and get inside of their headspace. And in return, it also shows us their strengths and their weakness as our children. And we know how to pray for them. And we pray with each other, for each other. Then well, that helps now to build the entire family, our family on a whole. So, our regular prayer meetings is one of the things that we adapt in order to stay stable in this time. And I might add on that also. Um, I would say looking, standing outside, looking in and us as 
two young people. I wouldn't reach 40 yet. Yes, the two young people where have four kids. Some people wanna, oh, how you manage, how you do it all. It's not easy. Nope. But day by day, when you really look into things, if we don't have God, we have, sometimes even wonder, oh, 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 me even reach this far. Because uh, both of us fail. All of us fail, but we we'll get up back again. And is one person alone can carry us through his time is God. Mm. Nobody else, because it is not easy. Yep. It's not pretty. We all fall on all of us still. We still are carry across the same way. Yep. So we just have to trust in our God the same way. Very good. I love that. Very real and profound. Sister Kayan, what habits have you given up or are working on to remain stable in God? A very good question. What habits have I given up to remain a stable Christian? Hmm. All right. In terms of stability for me, it's being rooted and grounded in Christ. From where I'm coming from, yes, I've heard about God before, but not until I accepted him as my personal savior, I understand who he really is. I was an individual that the least of things bother me. When we're locked in our corner, you'll be in front of me, and you're not in front of me because I don't see you. I block you off totally. I build a wall around myself just to not let the issues that affects me knocks me down even though at times it does. But I give up the habit of locking myself away. I trust me, I'm good at that. I may be inside my own soul and I won't speak. My family can tell you that. Persons have to wonder if I'm really alive because me, so once me go inside, me lock in, I want me to say lock in. No care how much key you try to push in the lock, or come with a bulldozer, I'm lucky in. And I've realized of lately, talking to a very good friend of mine, I learned to venerate and let out what is inside of me in order to be a better individual and realize that holding things inside, it won't help. Because trust me, see me, my stress level before I know Christ was I. Because as I tell you, everything bothers me. If the dog come in at the yard, it bother me. I'm going to lick him down. And I realize, <laughs> I realize I've grown past that now. Certain things don't bother me no more. I'm an overthinker. We think a million things one time. And I realize I'm not thinking so much anymore. I used to go to my bed and can't sleep. Because I think too much. And I realize that sometimes as I put on my head on my pillow, it's gone like a light. So I'm seeing where I've dropped off some of those bad habits and I'm learning to be me, getting to be me. I'm trying to learn me because sometimes I don't understand myself, you know, sure. to be honest. I don't understand myself. I know about anybody else, but I don't understand myself sometimes. I'm confused at times, but I am thankful that I know Christ who I can call upon, I can count on to take me through. You know, today I was saying to someone, I've been through a lot. There's a lot. Second to second. Somebody mics need to be mute. Can you mute your mic, please? There's a lot that I have inside that persons do not know. And I say I will take some things to my grave while some I will let out. It's good to venerate. So for me, one of the bad habits is to let go of some things that stifles me and causes high blood pressure. And I'm grateful that these couple of months, I am not where I was. Amen. And I can call up on Jesus, I can count on friends, and I know I can make it. And I'm grateful for my church family that I can talk to, and they encourage and they motivate. So that's one of my bad habits that I let go of, and I wish to remain stable. It's not easy. 
it's not an easy walk. And sometimes when my head chip, not even Bellevue will hold me. But I'm grateful that I have a savior that restores the mind. And those are my few words. Yeah. A lot of us on the platform as youth can relate to some yes, of we can. what you said. We can. I'm an overthinker too. And when I lie down on my bed to sleep at night, I will think about everything, what I did, what I shouldn't have done. I just about everything. If I want to eat and I eat. So, so I can definitely relate to what you're saying. Sister Candice, over to you. What are the main factors that cause instability among the youth of the church? So I'm going to ask you to tell me two of the main things that it, it, you believe cause instability. Sister Barb, I'm going to ask you for two more. And Sister Sakai, I'm going to ask you for the next two. So all three of you have that same question. What is it that you honestly believe cause instability among the youth in our church? Can I go first? <laughs> go ahead. All right. Um, I was reflecting on this question, and I placed. I I went back in the catalog, being a you know a, a youngster, as we kind of get up there. So, but um, <laughs> friends, definitely, the right. friendships that you that you keep, yeah. Um, why why I say is that. One minute. Let me close there. All right. Sorry about that. Um, friends is one of the main factors because if you have friends who are leading you astray, or you don't, they are especially when they are unsafe. As youths, especially the young, the younger ones, they tend to want to fit in, and by fitting in, right that influence kind of takes them out or make them unstable, True. right? That great influence. influence. Also, another factor would be um, prior life. And as it concerns that personal relationship with God, with God. if they don't see it as a priority to read the word and to apply it if they don't see it as a priority that will allow them to be um unstable so that, that is my two so your two is the type of friendship and influence that it has on us and yeah. on our prior life the relationship that we have with god yeah because um back in the days especially in the teenage years right um it's not that i they had a great influence, certain way, but for me personally, it's like, um, was, it's like I was drawn to basically want to fit in. Wouldn't say influence, you know, but me personally just want to fit in, right? Yeah. And by fitting in, I recognize that they saw me as the boss or the person. We call it now. Bring me the, the, the leader, the fun person, where if me say, eh, hey, everybody I go, if you, if me say, no, me not go, nobody na go. And because I had that, it just made me feel cool, you know? Yeah. I didn't have that at church. No. Yeah, I didn't have that at church with the, with the youth, that relationship. But because I had that outside, me feel like me a general, quote unquote general, you know? Yeah. And uh, that allowed me to kind of put God on the side because I was able to basically um, be at the forefront of everybody, you know, in my circle. And even though, and then again, even though I'm a know when, when Bishop I preach and so on, even though I knew that, yes, I ought, I ought to drop the friends, I ought to do this, it, you know, when, when no, I am not able to do that, I don't want to. It, that is a great influence now. Yeah. Me not, me not wanting to let, let, let go because hear what? Them see me as this, but in the church, me just steady. So this is where I'm saying no. You see, as when the youngsters come into church, this is where we're supposed to be, be around them. Don't just let them go. We're happy around them. 
yes. be there for them right through. Now give them an inch, right? Now make them say, boy, sister, son, son, never did it for me. Our brother, or son, never did it for me. Always push you to be there. I think I'm talking too long. I'll stop right now. <laughs> <laughs> that was very good and valid points. Sister Omi, Sister Candice. All right, so for me, okay, for me, for what, what I have observed, one, their own desires, what they want. Most times the youths want the things of the world. Sometimes what the church is offering them, they think, they, they find that boring, you understand? So what the world has to offer, what their friends has to offer, and peer pressure come in play as well. So most times um, fitting in, they see is the right way to go. So for example, all right, rule of the church, they're supposed to say they're supposed to wear um, skirts, right? Some teenagers, they don't want to wear the skirt because guess what? They feel like they feel a granny in the skirt. So they more wear the pants because them friends are wear the pants and they messing not around with wearing the pants. You understand? So the desires of the world and the things that their friend have to offer in the world tends to push them towards the world. And another thing, um, sometimes they're, they're honestly trying in the church, but then you would have persons within the church who would push them away without knowing that they're pushing them away, if you understand what I'm saying. So you would have a teenager, say, for example, you have a teenager coming to church each day and she might have a little attitude problem. Instead of helping that teenager to adjust or, or you know, work on the attitude problem in a very loving and kind way, you would just um, probably beat down on them more. Oh, you have an attitude problem. We can't stand them, we can't deal with it. Them little thing they push them away. You understand? So yeah, those are my two points. Solid points. Solid, solid points. Go see second days. Um, okay, I guess my two cents um are well since Amelia mentioned desires, but I can see uh, zoning more that Definitely, your desires are is one of the things that can really make you unstable, especially when you want something and you know you're not supposed to want it, right? Um, I can recall when I was younger, and there's something I really, really, really wanted to do. Um, but you know, I was standing in the shower, and I said, God, I really want to be, you know, but like, I know you're not supposed to do it, but I really, really, really want to be, you know, but all right, fine. So it's like it just it's like it just dawned on me. Can it why is it that you're struggling? Why is it the problem? What is the issue here? So it's like I said, okay, because I want to do something that I know I'm not supposed to be doing, I'm not supposed to want to do. I know that's what caused the tug and war is what caused instability, where you know you're not supposed to want something and you still you still want it. And then eventually the instability comes where your your tears and little peace. And then you realize it tastes nice and you want a bigger piece. So it's like the Easter bun. So you yeah. know that causes that causes the instability, right? And then what I'm thinking too is the lack of knowledge of the word. When you don't know the word, you can be, as the word puts it, you can be tossed to and fro. Anybody can tell you anything, right? And you are you are thrown off. So when somebody says, no man, you can do it, man. And then you have the I'm auntie to put it this way, the Anna not me. The Anna not me. The things that we, we know that we're not supposed to do, but we say, Anna, not me. So, no, not knowing the word definitely will cause us to become unstable. So, when we don't know what it is that we shouldn't be doing, then we won't know what, to do. as the word says, put it to when you didn't know the law, you didn't know what sin was. When the law was introduced, you didn't know what sin was. But when the law was introduced, that's when you knew what sin it was. So, just like when we don't know the word, we won't know where the, like, the word is. It's where the line is drawn, where we are not supposed to go across this line. This is where it stops, and this is where you ought not to go. So I put I put it as 
your desires causing you to become in, unstable when you know you, you want to do something you don't want and you shouldn't be doing it and then the lack of knowledge of the word knowing where you you should be positioned as a child of god or even as an individual that's my few things my few words when when the honor and honor sin she pain that's when we need to check ourselves the most that's when we start questioning the things and say what am i saying i just the church rule or i just so pastor say so bishop say so i don't know you agree it you know that's when we really need to start checking ourselves very much so sister daniela francis tell me one thing not one give us two factors that you can do as a young christian to ensure that you are grounded in god All right, so two factors to ensure that I'm doing it in God. Firstly, um, I would say I have to make sure that my mindset remains on God and the, the surroundings, my surroundings. So for me personally, I've been saved 10 months now. It's been 10 months. And um, I've kind of cleaned up my inner circle some things that I would normally do before, you know, I, I just get rid of all of that. Some things that I used to love doing that weren't of God. I let go of all of that because those things will drain you spiritually. And, in, and if you're um, entangling some of those things, you know, you want to go back to the way of the world and say, but we missed this and this and that. So I've cleaned up my circle. And um, another thing is, Praying, having a personal relationship with God. That's that's very important. Yes. You have to pray, you have to talk to God and, and let the whole um the, the, the Holy Spirit guide you. Right? So certain things just get down on my knees and I just pray and ask God for guidance because I can't look to man for certain things. Only God, God sits there and he looks slow. He knows everything. So when I need guidance, I, I go to him, you know, pray, read the word, try to understand the word, research and all of that to make sure that I'm on the right track where that is concerned. So those are two um, factors for me. All right. So you clean up your, your circle, right? Have you replaced? Yeah. Have you replaced? Um, replenish your circle. Have you add back anyone to your circle that will be in your corner to influence you or to help you along your journey with Christ? All right, so for me, I have friends that are Christian, so they help, they help. Um, from my church, Sister Desia, she's been a very um, wonderful influence for me. You know, she always checks up on me and all of that. She stay all right, so on. So how is this going? How is that going? Pastor the same, Pastor Poiser. So yeah, I had and, and their their experience. For me personally, I like to look to to all the people who are experienced, who you know have been there, done that for guidance. So that they have really helped me. Yes, I don't really have much young people like people my age who I say I really look to you for guidance because me and you going through the same thing I need somebody who is experienced has knowledge can guide me a certain way that I know that yes this is how it's done yes I love that I really love that sister Tolan do you have your hand up you have a question for the team or is there something that you want to add to I would like to add as well that in terms of instability sometimes what the young persons feed their minds with cause a level of instability. For instance, a person who constantly read really like Mills and Blues or watch inappropriate programs or is constantly on social media following celebrities, wanting to be like the Joneses, the conversations that they have. If they feed their mind with these things instead of the word of God, it will take a toll on them. When I was much younger, whatever I did like during the days, I love to read. 
any material that I love to read. And in my time, what the students in my class were reading were the Mills and Blues. And so I started to read those love books as well. And I would put my good bed and dream, all those things. So sometimes what you feed your mind with daily, it consumes you and it takes out all of you. And so it causes a level of instability. When you're supposed to pray, your mind is elsewhere. And when you're at church to worship as a young person, your mind is at school on your boyfriend, what you want with your boyfriend. And so these things can be very distracting. And so you have to put your, 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 yourself in a place where you can feed your mind positive and spiritual things that will help to be more grounded in God. I strongly agree. I strongly okay, agree. Um, go ahead, go ahead. Good question. Um, so, okay. Who do I pose this to? Sister Candace. Hmm. Okay. Um, I heard the bad influence that comes, the friends and all of that. You know, but um, in life, in our Christian work, we'll constantly have bad influence. They will come. People will come. So what I, what I want to ask you now, seeing that even though you're young, you're actually growing, you're actually maturing. So if a bad influence should come your way now, for, for um, maybe it might be in the form of a friend, uh, one man where I look you, or uh, you know, something, something like that, what would you do or what would you say to that person to really, um, yeah, what would you do then? What would you do? Because, um, some young people might don't know how to or what to do at that point in time. So I want you to tell them, if that should come your way now, what would you do? Is that a question for me, Ivan? Yes, Sister Candace, <laughs> darling. <laughs> All right. Um, well, probably like Joseph, I'll run. Because um, yeah, that's the best way. Run. Um, I mean, I, I, I am a, I'm all right. As an employee, I'm, I'm a young person. I am, I have been, I have been surrounded by, by unsaved persons, mm -hmm. and I mean, their content can be so, not necessarily vulgar, but um, it can be very um explicit. Yes, very explicit. So in cases like those, normally I would run out of the office. And say, so, okay, excuse me, excuse me, I am leaving a moment. When I'm when let, tell me when you are through, because I am not interested in this kind of argument. No, they respect me now. Don't wrong don't wrong me. But sometimes when they get too heated, yeah, beyond me, I really have to excuse myself and say, please excuse me a moment. Um, when it comes to like, the men now, of course, of course, I get the men them my way, especially when uh, anyway, yes. When the men come around. Yes, um, I am able, but some God is just so good. Sometimes He give me some words I don't know where the words them come from, and it's like it just stop them that them have to walk away. I don't know. Sometimes I can't I can't take credit for myself when it comes to the men, but God is and the word puts it this way: when the temptation comes, the Lord knows to make a way of escape, and He really knows to make a way of escape. So you know, I I I don't know what to, I can't give you words exact words to say i'm not i can't tell you that it, it, it really takes the holy spirit to tell you what to say when to say and how to say it to really stop you know it's like when jesus was in temptation him no for stop the devil see him so him no forgive with the words just to stop them them can't say nothing them ever say all right all right Mark, all right but god no i'm i'm going i'm leaving you so i i i don't know what to say but the the, the ideal thing is to run and if you can't run, the Lord will really come in right on time. He will find that somebody will come along where they must take you away. God is, God is just so awesome. Take you away from the situation or I'm just give you the right word to say right there, right on time and just stop them and they have to walk away quickly. Yes. So that's all I can say. I can't give you the exact words to say. The Holy, the Holy Spirit can do that for you. Very good. Um. Can I give a, a, a little experience, experience that I had the other day? 
okay, this gentleman in my community, all the time this this man see me, I like you, you know, yeah, I like you, I like you, I love you. Me say, eh, hey, me love you too. Me love you in a Jesus name. You know, and because I'm a JP and I put my number on the gates, but you know, when person said I want to talk to me, because a lot of time people come to say, um, Sister Pat, can I talk to you? I have a situation that I really would like your advice on it and all of that. So I said, I need to talk to you, you know, seriously. I kind of have one little thing in the back of my head, so that man, you know, him, not, him, uh, him up to something differently. Anyway, I gave him the number. And when I gave him the number, I realized that he started to call me. He might call me every day, you know. How may I say, what is wrong with this man? Sometimes when me recognize him, me not, me not answer the phone. All right. The other day, you now, come out of the bathroom, you know. Have my towel around me. I don't even go in my yard with my towel around me. When me hear the phone ring, I didn't, me never check who it was on the phone, who was um, calling the phone. And me just open the phone now and answer. Pop this man face right up in front of me. me I was so frightened because me, me, you know, me, me, me tap this thing and you know what I mean? And me said, but well, this man called me, but you call this something, but, um, the, the video, video call. Me video said, call. This man a video call me. Him out of order, so. You know, and right away I blocked him. Because I said, no man, because him start to come in and some little suck away you know, when he start talking about God and him used to pray and people get healing and all of them story there. Because him thinks I now become a one, one man, we are Christian, him can't come tell me anything. I'm a, I'm a jump towards it. Yeah, and him come and him, you know, can I, can I bring dinner for you? I said, no darling, I'm okay. When him said, um, Sister Pat, um, you're not cooking today, I said, no dear. Can I bring some of my dinner for you? I said, no, no, thank you. That's nice though. That's nice to offer, but I'm good. I'm good. You know, so these are the suckle little way. The devil them come. Right? So I said, this man must have something cross my forehead for some desperate right now. Yeah. So these are some of the ways where we can um, you know, get rid of some of them. Some of them persistent still, you know, but we have to know how to deal with it. All right. God bless you. All right. Well needed intervention and very solid point as well. Pastor Poiser, your hand is up. Um, good night again. I just want to bring a comment that was registered in the chat to your attention in any event that you may find substance in it and you could direct it to any one of the panelists. And it goes, I have a church sister who encountered the same thing. She was often berated for what she was doing wrong but she never got counseling from the chief complainer against her or anyone else who had an issue with her. Eventually, she stopped coming to church. So I read it and I think that it is really important about what she was going through, how it was dealt with and her response to the immediate situation. So that's for you, Madam Host. No problem, Brother Graham. I'll pose that question over to you. All right. So um, during all of what was happening, um, there are a few of us who tried to check up, check up on her. And she would have moved away from the community to live with her grandfather, her father in an environment that was um, characteristically unchristian. So there was not, there was no one there to help her. And so we so I encourage her to go back home, even though, even though at the time a lot of the, a lot of the problems st um, stemmed from in the house because the mother kept having issues with her and then bringing it to um, people at church. And so she never had a relationship with her mother. And then she came to church and woke up on the same thing. And so anyway, so she, we in encourage her, kind of come back closer so you can come to fellowship and we, then she started to, you know, we started to encourage her with the word, reading the word and all of these things. And um, she coming to Sunday school. Um, I teach Sunday school at church and she, and, and, and one of the things I like is that she's always ready to participate. 
And what I found was that be, um, she was actually reading the word now, as Sister Charlene mentioned about reading the word and how important it is. She started to, and so it began to change how she viewed them because she started to resent the people, you know. She said, and I, and I got angry with some of them as well. I was so angry, even with my mother too, because I said to them, all of you are complaining about the young lady clothes. Yes, she, some of her clothes may not be good, but by, by, by her two year class, that was my concern. She doesn't, she's a, she's a high school student. She's not working. By her, her mother has it hard. By her two year class, no? Those kind of things. And, and anyways, those kind of things encouraged her and she came back and no, she, 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 she's no longer on the youth quest. She decided not to, to join because some things are not, um, or rejoin because some things are not ironed out with her mom. But she is very, she's more mature now because she started to read the word, learn who Jesus Christ is and started to see those who were complaining against her um, through the lens of scripture. You know, so I, I, I would suggest that in a, in a setting, we must correct people, and I'm all for that. We must correct people. But you see, if it is something where you can help, help. It's not only to correct and to say, um, sister, do this. And, and a lot of times you hear it again, sister. Sister, you need to, you're doing this wrong. In her, in her situation, specific situation, I said, I said to people, you are complaining. Every, every Sunday she come and have, an, in, in, have something to say. I am saying, buy her two yard o'clock. Make sure she makes some clothes. Find one nice style from Pinterest and buy her two other cards and the sister, go for a dressmaker, go make this. Maybe me, me even pay the pay for the um for the thing, or if you can find the money, you pay for it. But you have to find um if you find means, if, if, if you can help, find means to help. You know, make any sense to keep berating people because we need encouragement too. And only if you tell me, say, Lord, you're wrong, tell me why it is wrong and help me. Practically, to, to, you know, to overcome it, it's not. Well, no, I'm sorry, I can't. I can't work with those kind of situations. You have to play a part. You know, complain, try solve to. As we look at it, that is true. Instead of highlighting the problems and showing it up, then we need to bring practical solution to the table. And I think that would help our youth in the church a lot, because we tend to highlight. I I don't believe that we should condone sin any at all. Or anything that is wrong, we should point it out. But at the same time, when we point it out, we should offer guidance. And yes, I do know that a lot of us are stubborn and pig headed and love our own way. But even in that same breath, we still need that that guidance, that show that we, as if we don't want it. We we still need it. So sometimes it's not so much of talking, but the practical aspect of it that will really help. Sir, you look like burning up and eating and want to go. There's a question I want to ask. Yes, sir. How do we treat with the younger ones in our midst that are very jubilant in relation to social media and all of attraction, but when they come to church, they are dead. They don't participate. They're just stiff and out of this world. How do you treat with that? You're posing it to the panel or to me? I think we I am going to show it to you and you will distribute it. All right, no problem. Sister Colleen Williams, I'll start with you. You haven't gone yet since night. So we're answering Bishop. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I did not yes. Yes. You see, you see, I, I, I was waiting. I wondering if you're waiting, you're saving the most challenging <laughs> questions for, 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 for me though. Um just just um all right. I think what Bishop was just to repeat, um, what he was saying is that the persons were actively participating in social media and all of that. And within the life of the church, you're not actively participating. One of the things that I see with this is that as the scripture says, every man is drawn away by his own lust and enticed. And each man has to give an account for the deeds that they do in their body. And in terms of maintaining stability, for some of them, they are going through a period of ambivalence. They're going through a period whereas they are not yet much. Well, everybody's not mature. They are, go, they are just coming into fellowship for some. You might be teaching them, you might be grooming them, giving them guidance as it relates to 
how to, 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 to respond in a situation or how to have godly values and principles. But as an individual, you have to make rational and critical decisions. Decisions that are going to help you grow spiritually. So if as a young person, if you realize that you are so easily led away, easily influenced by the social media and spiritually you are being drained, you have to come to a point in your life to decide when. I think um, somebody sharing their screen now, oh, yeah. Ellis. Yeah, Ellington, I think, yeah, sure. So as an individual, you have to now decide, take careful introspection of, for your Christian life to decide what it is that you are go, go, that is going to guide your and govern your life. What it is that you are given priority to, because as the scripture says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and all other things shall be added after. Mark you, social media, it is not um, all bad, you know, but how you use it, how you balance your life, how you have that sense of stability so as that one aspect is not being pulled in another one. And in, 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 even in stability, as I said, balance, balance is having a level playing field, but then you have it's stability in the sense that God is utmost, God is priority, so to speak. So you can't be, you can't be um, having a, um, what do you call it? two-faced so to speak are, are in the secular world you are all jovial and up and about but then within the church you are not actively participating you are not worshiping you as an individual because in that sense i will see that it is an individual arm um, decision you know the truth and you are not doing that which is right so for those who are who, who don't know the truth i can understand because you are growing it is one way in which that now we as a, as a church has to guide these individuals, especially for the younger ones, maybe the under the teenage age and all of that, because they are the ones sometimes are actively on these social media sites. Sometimes they might not have proper parenting to guide them and to groom them in terms of what or where they go. But we have to, have to offer that guidance to these young people for those who are being negatively impacted by social media because in these uncertain times, social media is the number one influence in the, in, the, in the minds and the lives of the youth. It is what is driving communication. It is what is driving, influencing the, the young people and making decisions that sometimes are detrimental to their spiritual growth and development. So for young people who are, who are so influenced by the social media, they have to come to a balance. Am I going to be using social media to, to, to enhance my spiritual life? Am I going to use it to positively influence those to whom I, I, I socialize with? That is a question. But for those who are not yet mature, who, who don't really understand how to manage themselves, we have to guide them. We have to groom them as maturing believers, more mature persons in the Lord. And if you are, if you are guiding them or grooming them, do it with love, do it in, in a way that is, that will help them, not to push them away. Because sometimes you might say, come off of your phone. But you don't know what they are doing on the phone. You have to do it in a way that is more welcoming, with, with warmth, so to speak. I don't know if I, I, I clarify or answer the question, Bishop. Yeah. There is, there is, if you will, um, Madam, Right. The same on the same on the same note. I am thinking broadly um, because it is a prevalent observance. I have been observing this over a period. What mechanism within the context of the youth department, Sunday school, part of the parent uh, aspect too, have we put in place? to help those who, because of their ambivalence, that period there, they are, you know, pushing against everything. Maybe because of their rebellion. Within the context of the home, maybe the mother is a single parent home, whether a mother treating with a, 
a young man or a father with a young miss, what mechanism have we put in church to help to create that balance that is necessary for these individuals? And how, in addition to the question, and how can we use the same social media, the same gadgets to enhance that balance? In a in a in a up close and personal way. That's Sister Candice. Yes, yes, Maria. How about that? What was the what was the question? My apologies. A mechanism that we can put in place as youth leaders and Sunday school personnel. And how can we use social media to help our okay our that's youth. what i was kind of thinking to myself how to engage our young people in order for them to really focus on god because i'm i'm thinking well the thought is we just have to use the same social media to get their attention because the truth is that social media is addictive and once you watch one thing you move to something else then they move to something else, then they move to something else. So I, I, um, that's really a tough question that Bishop really posed. That's a really relevant question. Um, but I just have to say, we have to use the same medium to try to engage them, use, um, videos, use something, anything that is via that, that means in order to engage them because that's where their attention is now, right? We can, I mean, we can, we can talk to them as young people, we can engage them for them to exp express to us how they are feeling, you know, do the same one in one thing and see if it's best for them to, if that will work for them to, you know, help to let us understand where they're at and how we can better approach the situation. Um, that's one thing. The, the, one on one is one aspect, and then we can use, as I said, use the same social media to engage them, find some pop, find presentation, some some form of activity online so people can get and to engage them so that they can see that yes, social media is bad, but social media can also be good in that this is where it is, and this is where you ought to be with God. Right, so it can also be used to engage them as youth. That's what I'm thinking. So we have, we have to use the medium that is engage them now for our benefit to to draw them to God. All right. One last part of that same question, and I'm done. What if we allow them to teach us how to engage the process? What if we engage them and their gadgets and let them establish some of the methods, methodologies, programs, expose them to research maybe, okay, we're talking about worship. How can you use your, this medium, you as an individual to engage this research and at the end of the day, make that presentation to the peer to within the context of that service. So you get them engaged, you build a relationship around the gadget because since it is such an influencing factor, you engage not only the gadget, the mind, but the person and pull them in the context. They will teach us some things that we do not know to, so as to help to bridge that gap that I think exists in church. There's a generational gap. How do we treat with that? Do you think that we engage them in that context and allow them to teach us as well as we teach them to? create that thing. So, so, um, so Jackie and, Jackie and what Bishop is saying, it's them who will have to help us to teach them. <laughs> they will have to be the ones to teach us to teach them or help us to teach them to see what their interests, where their interests lie and how best to, to address those interests. By, a, by the means of same social media. So even if it's to even host a competition, some way to engage them via that, that means then, that's how we'll have to do it. 
I know children love to compete, they love to win. So even to use that route to get them to focus, say, get your focus back here, then I suppose that's the best means to go. But yes, you have to learn from them to how to teach them. That's my thought. That's what Bishop said. I'm taking it by force um, till the post comes back. I think um, one of the point raised by Bishop earlier uh, is that for last year, 2020, as a youth arm, we had started an initiative, whereas a WhatsApp group was created for or the youths within our church. And what we did was that we had weekly competitions. I don't know if for most persons will remember when we had the weekly competitions in that it was done in a creative way. Whereas the questions that were posed, most of the questions that were posed is that I will assess, I look at the sermon for the week or the day, pull questions from it, and then I'll throw it out. So each Wednesday, they were looking forward to the question. So one of the things that it brought out to me, if, if, if first persons were observant, is that for the youths, they were actively listening throughout the entire service. They were documenting, taking notes for the next week's um, quiz because they were anticipating some of the questions coming from some of the ser ser sermons and, and the church's services. So. Um, that was a means that we utilized um, last um, year, the early part of last year before the whole COVID thing came. And that was something that was working for a while until we were became a bit unstable. Um, I think the last um, question that I posed now is being fleshing out when I proposed a youth a week, a Friday night to have a little discussion using the same um, thing, WhatsApp thing, but that didn't... Um, went through, it fell through the cracks. But seeing that we are now actively online, we can now go back to the drawing board, assess our, 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 our churches, look at the youth arm again now, and we can utilize these same mediums as being proposed to effectively engage the youth arm and to really build the fellowship in terms of engaging the youth and using these same technologically um, sources and devices to enhance their spiritual growth and development because these are the things that they gravitate to and we have to use these things to really minister to them and to really keep them rooted and grounded in the world. All right. Um, I'm not seeing the hosts as yet, but um, I'm still kind of looking back at the initial question that Bishop posed. Um, you know, in terms of the young people paying some, you know, might pay more attention to the gadget and, you know, when it comes to the things of God, you know, it, it, it's just little regard. One-on-one um, -on -one dialogue do help. I can share from my own experience. Um, I, I knew Bishop from I was a, a little a child, very young age, from church was at 109. So growing up, I because I looked up to him, you know, um, becoming an adult in Christ, I could share certain things with him. I could, you know, really sit down and rap with him like, you know, like a father or something. I could have done that because... I grow to, to, to develop that trust in him where I can, you know, reason with him. But the thing is, not all the young people will feel like that. Not everyone will be willing to open up themselves. I mean, yes, even though, I mean, even our bishop, I mean, is one of the most caring person, but not everybody will open up themselves to share, especially young people, not everyone in home to share certain things. Um, but, and sometimes as well, sometimes the attention paid to the social media. Sometimes the social media is not the problem, you know. Most times, most, if you see, if, if you really find out what the true reason is why some of these young persons are not 
you know, where they're at, where God is concerned, why they're not showing that much interest. You'd find out that the social media is just a cover up, it's just a way to express themselves or to divert away from the real root problem. Sometimes there are deep, deep issues, there are deep problems that some of these youths are going through. But the, and the young man earlier, he's a part of the panel, he raised an example about the, 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 the young lady. Sometimes there are deep issues, but because persons, um, I mean, some persons do make effort, and I'm not gonna say that, you know, persons don't make effort to reach some of these youth. There are individuals that go two, they go more than 200 miles. However, if you do reach or reach that, find out what that issue is, because, the social media, as I say, is just, is just a little way of getting away from the problem. So oftentimes there are deep, deep issues that a lot of these young people they are going through. And as I said, because they have not been taught or they haven't grown to, to, to trust, you know, to trust certain, in, to trust persons, then they won't open up. So we have to find a way of getting these individuals to, to talk up you know, provide platforms for them to, to speak out, to talk what they're going through. And especially the one-on-one, -on -one, one -on one-on-one dialogue, it helps because they might not be able to say certain things in the open, but that one-on-one -on -one dialogue, it helps. So it's about trying to gain the trust, trying to gain these young people's trust that they can be more open to share exactly what they're going through. Yeah, that's mine. Valid point. Um, I'll add to what Brother Richard said. Coming out of the teenage section last night, um, we went up until 10 o'clock because the youth of our church really had a lot to say. I sent Sister Sherina a message this morning and said, we have our work cut out for us, which is true. Because, sir, when you listen to the teenagers of our church, this whole topic came up with social media and the whole thing of being active on social media and not active in church because we have a lot of young people in our church who are definitely hurting. Remember, my group was from 13 to 19. They have issues, church-related, home-related, and school-related that is affecting them. And when we asked the question last night, how many persons have somebody to talk to, whether in church or at school or at home, only two out of the 10. And persons tell you that they come to church and persons will say, why are you not singing or why are you not worshiping? And it's not a matter of fact that you, they don't want to sing or they don't want to worship, but it's just what is happening and that we as adults in the church have offended them in some ways and they don't know how to bring it across to us to say, I am offended without we further escalating the issue. So we have a lot of hurting um, youths that use social media as a platform just to ignore what the real problem is and that come out in the session last night and when i look at the comments with the youth same set of youth from the meeting last night and they did ask me to ask the adults of the church this question in the group last night i was told to ask the adults of, of the church this question and to ask us as adults why is it that we are so quick to judge the youth without finding out what is it that are affecting them and we are not God, so why are we judging them so that's a question that the teenage, um, teenagers of the church wanted to pose to us as adults. And if you will, Madam Nordia, yes, sir. back to you. And it's the same issue of not gone. Yes. Because it is, this is an issue, or these are issues that long before this session, Came up this week. This is, these are contemplations that I do on a consistent basis where the church is concerned. And these are my concerns. We have put in place a youth arm, yes. a Sunday school, women's department, men's department. These are not just departments that are placed there for showcasing, these are departments that are established to deal with the same issues that we're dealing with on this platform tonight. For example, the young people's group, is it so skewed, so created 
that a platform is established where the youth can give real life expression and experience so that when we get into the context of the larger church, we can relate, we can deal with, we can now address the situation and have them fixed. To hear it is one, but what the, the question again, what is the mechanism that we put in place now to be the bridge to allow this healing to take place without you know, just jumping and saying this, that, and the other, because this is my concern. No. As the overall leader, I am not going to take the initiative to push against you. It's your responsibility. Now, if you need help, you're all up for help. That is the reason why we are workers together. So that question that is posed, I think, part of the mechanism between Sunday school, youth harm, is to ensure that we have real life situations that we deal with on a consistent basis to bridge the gap to create the bridge so that the church and the youth can have that better relationship. One, how do we establish trust, confidence, and accountability? There's much more I can say, but I, I rest it there. How are we going to treat with this going forward? Brother Tolange, I don't know. No, it's Sister Duncan, Alicia Duncan. Yes, good night, everybody. I don't think y'all know me, but I am a colleague from Miller. And as it pertains to that question, I have similar issues at my church with the young people. They're very uninterested <laughs> at this moment. And uh, we have tried so many mechanisms to get them active. But you will see that there's a trend that they'll become active today and tomorrow, it's, it's, it's like, it's the hardest thing to get them back on par, right? So um, I'm glad to be a part of tonight's discussion. And uh, I think some of the problems that young people are having is, as the brother said earlier, pertaining to um, getting somebody to talk to. Persons don't readily and easily discuss certain things with persons. But if they have um, leaders or persons that they, that will, you know, check up on them a couple of times, um, see what they're really going through. Sometimes um, the heads are the persons that are the ones that need to really reach out to the young people. Because um, you realize that, they, that they're not coming to you. You see that they may have, they may have some issues they may have a problem with, you know, singing a song or so forth. Um, don't be so quick to, to bash them in such a way, but find a way to encourage them, right? So you might say, all right, Sister Alicia, look, you didn't do it so well this time. Why not try to do it this way? You understand? Try to motivate them more. Because when you realize that you're trying to do something, in church and you're trying to be a part of things and you realize that instead of being motivated and so forth you're being bashed in such a way you're, you're not going to be motivated to do anything you're not going to be encouraged to do anything you might not go change okay i say all right i'm looking to the same church people and play encourage you and so forth and instead of they are the ones that to help me they are breaking me down you understand and I experienced similar situation at my church, you understand? So I can understand um, to an extent what um, some persons may undergo. Um, as it relates to like gadgets and so forth, um, this is a wide issue as it relates to like gadgets and so forth, because they realize that the interests that persons may have in the gadgets, they don't have that interest in going to Sunday school or probably like reading the word of God. It can be um, some of the key problems is at the home. Because if you don't have that back in the home to push you and say, all right, you don't have a grandmother, you don't have a mother that is going to church, are you alone? You have some young people that are, they are the only ones at home. 
that are Christians and going to church. Sure. And they are looked up to the heads to, to motivate them, to push them and to say, you can do this. They live in a negative environment. Some of them live in a, some negative environment. You don't never know. You understand? Them come to church and sing, yeah. And so sometimes they take themselves in a corner and they just don't feel like participating anymore because they don't have that little push and that, that motivation to say, all right, I can do this. Then go back into the same negative environment. And then they still in the, the church, the same environment where they are being criticized instead of being motivated and encouraged. So this is my few words. Um, and that is just my idea for tonight, all right? Bless Thank you. you. Bless you. Sabel, your hand is up. Yes, I have my little part to say. Um, I would say um, it starts with us. Yes, the young people them um, not pay interest. Um, they mostly rely on the whole gadget and the internet. It's because if we, as the elder one, speak to them, we need to be ourselves. Not pretend, not putting up, not not sure. I just we have to confess to them what we be, what we have been through. Yes, we got you dirty, we got you tough. Tell them the world dirty, tell them the world tough. Tell them the truth, cause they do have young you to me delete me, me um talk to. And me tell them the truth. If you take up that that to reach you, me no want to reach this or me no want to that be or me no me want to reach a place where and even if you have it where. You have a time when you do pay interest in them, and when they're done, sometimes they realize that you get annoyed at them. Because we as church people get annoyed sometimes. Because sometimes we go and we say we are we, are, we only go when we feel like. You make up, let me soon come talk to him. Now come come at church, you know, yeah. Tell them to come at church, but yes, you know, go, go for them. Me come me come for your Sunday. You go for them, make them sister, you, you mean it. You don't, you're not just talk. You're really interested. You want to see them move. Them want, when them sister, you're really interested in, in them, not just motivating them, but prove to them. So, well, me, I'm of Christ. So I'm being Christ. Like this is how when Christ go out there and minister. That's how we should go out there. And we're not so we're just walk out go by any territory. So we make sure we're self in order too. Because we can't just walk by any ground like that. But still, just be yourself 100%. Not make up nothing, not pretty up, not just tell them the truth. Confess to them what we got through, the, the hard truth. I've been that, I'm gonna do that, I'm gonna fornicate, I'm gonna do this and that, that man. But come to God and God really wash and cleanse me, he, he might open up doors and can do the same for you too. Me can get up and brush off again, yes. I'm going to do that, I'm going to do that, I'm going to go to the rob, I'm going to go to the thief. But God made me a change, man. No. Tell them what you're doing in life. Make you reach where you there. And trust me, then we relate. And want come and say, no, say, I can't relate with him and she because they have done that before. So them know, I go to them know, I feel. Them now just have word and mouth at all. So that's my take. Right. So them, if, if we not do that, they are going to turn to the internet because the internet, but I say they are comfort, them can't express themselves. They can't express the week. Because sometimes sometimes we use them out a lot because sometimes them can them find it as somebody where them can't find in and yes, they will go. We use them out too much as Christian to walk and say, you know, say Tom they can't already tell me that and me can't believe them do that. I mean, now I go back to them, here, I go invite them no way. It go like that too. So just we as Christians believe like Christians and just be that that push for the young people them so where. Them instead of sitting on the wall, sitting on the phone and up on the internet, them say, no, say, Cara, the infamy out there, so I go, come in. I like Cara, Cara have an interest in me, so maybe she can push me to go the right way. Yeah, that's my thing. Thank you very much. Thank you, sister. Brother Richard, I put down your hand if your hand is not up. Yeah, um, the one of the latter question, um, I heard Bishop asking. What I get from it is, is where do we go from here? Um, what do we do to correct, you know, some of the long-standing issues that, that that you know our youth are going through? And and my my response would be, um, Sister Narda, you mentioned that you you the group, what age group you say you had last night? Thirteen to nineteen. Are thirteen to nineteen? What can be done is 
maybe that age group is kind of a too big span, maybe could break it down in two. What we can do, we can create a group thing where you allow these youth to express themselves, I mean, talk what they're going through. But it wouldn't be a case where we select the persons or the leaders to sit with these young persons. Let them choose because you might think that, okay, then brother to lunch, you know, would be good to, 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 to have a raise with this young man or that person. When, when the individual might not see that way, let them choose who among among whether the youth leadership are, are the older leaders, let them choose who they would, who they feel comfortable to dialogue, to, to, to express certain things that they are going through. Let them choose and have sessions, have sessions with them. And if they want a one-on-one -on -one session, have one-on-one -on -one session, but there should be um, a medium like what I'm explaining for them to express themselves. Because if they don't express themselves, the issues will not be resolved. And we have seen a lot of young people, as soon as they leave high school, they're gone out of the church. So create a little group. Let them choose who they think, you know, they would be more comfortable sharing certain things with. And let them express themselves. Let them tell, you know, what it is they are going through, what the issues are, what the deep problems, as the sister say, problems in homes, problems, you know, let them say what it is. And then from there, within that group, these issues can be looked at and it can be resolved. Uh, can I, I think before, before I chip in, Sister Jackson, one thing. Um, I'm going down the same line like you, but, Atalons, but I, a little bit different. It's not just with respective group, but um, coming out of the group, I would say it go further, it go with the entire church and start with the youth. And we allowing them to express how they feel without putting up a defense. And where it is that, it is that we have offended them, not necessarily that that was our intention, but where it is that we have offended them, then we apologize and apology go a far away. We apologize and then we take the one-on-one -on -one from there because some of the issues are not issues that I believe we as Sunday school superintendents and youth leaders can deal with. Some of the issues that we go to our trained bishop, our trained pastors, trained ministers um, in that sense to do that level of counseling what they need. Because outside of the group, what they're saying is that they don't really trust anybody now. Because when it is that they talk to the person, then they hear it back, they hear it back from the teacher in the classroom, they hear it back in church, they hear it around the public. This was coming out of the group. So they don't trust anybody enough to say really what the issue is. And they they need that. They need that. They need to express themselves. So to set them free and them can't even for them if we got ever for true. So it went in more than just the Sunday school arm and the youth body or the first initial meeting. It went in where the leaders have to help, and not just the leaders, but the adults, the bridging of the church. Because sometimes, really and truly, we say something, not in a sense to offend them, but they took it as an offense. So something that we have to look at in order to help them and so not to, to push them away. Last night it was said that Google and TikTok um, our teachers and teaching them and helping them more than how we are helping them. And that is something that, you know, it affected me throughout the night. It really troubled my mind and played on me. So we have to find, bridge the gap. Men that, that bar, get them to trust us again. See where, where we go wrong and see how we can fix it and take small steps going in different direction. Yeah. Sister Bell, no, Evangelist Jackson, you had something to say? Okay, um, you're actually um, kind of on the same road that I was actually going. Um, let me tell you, you see in these times, we really have to depend on the Holy Spirit to guide us in some of these situations. Because young people, some young people, you see when they make up their mind to do their own thing, you, there is nothing that you can do or say to let them turn from what they want to do. They want to do what they want to do, and they are going to do what they want to do. You understand me? So this is where we, 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 we have to come down. It has to come down to the Holy Spirit and 
that he give us wisdom to deal with some situation. Because um, it, just the same thing, um, it's, most of the time these are not just coming from the surface. Most of the time these things are deep. It's coming from a family, family situation, right? Yes, I know they are in the church, but as you say, um, some of these um, situations, when you get in the headspace, if you can, um, it might need more than just young people, you know, talking because we some some you, you don't have the expertise to counsel. You understand? Some of these might there, there might be abuse from 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 a child coming up and all of that, and a lot of things are happening that some of these young people are not really opening up to. You understand me? So there, there are ways and means where, where you can get in their headspace to know where they are, right? I have some in my house that they do um, online work. And sometimes if I'm not behind them, PP clock clock, they, 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 they would be doing their work. And at the same time, they are watching a game or playing a game, right? These are the way they, 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 they move and they are slick. Yep. These young people, they are very, very slick, and them think you born big like how you born, like how you look now. You understand? So we really have to get relevant and serious and know, say, there are times when, when you try and you try your endeavor best, and it's like your best is not good enough. But sometimes it's not just a surface thing. Sometimes it's very, very deep. And, 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 and unless you can get into that deep space that they have, they're gonna bag a whole heap of things there. A whole heap of things. Because trust me, your parents that are trying to talk to their children, you hear Brother Oshin talking, Ray, for him, man, I talk to him enough. I should try with him enough. But you see, when them, them have something enough for them, space so they want to get out and what they want to do. Because I remember, brethren, we did young too. Right? And when we did reach, when we was 18, we didn't want to leave my mother's house like crazy. Never a Christian or anything. Not, not change, you know. It only get worse. It only get worse. Yeah, the young people, them, they are in the church and it's a, it, it's, it's a warfare to keep them in. So you see, if, if, if the Holy Spirit, if God not come in and really give us direction to deal with, with, with some of these children, we're going to lose the whole of them. Sure. Because that's what the enemy wants. He don't want the young people for in the church. He want them out there because they're strong and them can do things. You understand me? He might kind of let up on the old one them because he doesn't say, hey, but he might, he might go for the young one them. You understand me? So we really, we really need ways and means. Yeah, young people can, can reach young people, but in what aspect? Some of these things are very deep. It's very, very deep. Some children, we know that we can have youths in our church that, are, that were abused from a child coming up. And we don't know that. We don't know that and they are not opening up. Their parents might know and they are still not opening up either. So that, 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 take, that take the Holy Spirit like crazy if we really deal with it. So brethren, we have a task on our hand. We have work in our up for the, and we have a fasting and prayer. The Bible said these things don't move unless fasting and prayer come in. Sure. You understand me? So sometimes we have to take it by force and go in some, the church, go in some serious fasting and prayer for the children and take them out of the, the grip of the enemy. Because the, the, the devil have enough of them in the, the palm of him hand. They must say TikTok, make them learn more. Yeah, because they want up on TikTok. And they are find things to the pond. You understand me? So we have to be real. We have to be real. That's my word. Sister Nordia, okay. I just Hi. want to make a point before yes, sir. a close. I partially agree with, with, with some of the um, discussion. And I say partially in quotations. Some of the issues that we have on hand they have to be dealt with professionally. Right, agreed. The church that we belong to, we emphasize spirituality, which is good. 
but the Bible speaks of holistic growth. Right. We can't treat with children as adults. Children are children. Part of a child is the child must play. Yes. The environment has changed. Where in my days, I go play marble, I go fly kite and do all kind of thing. The environment has changed. Them, them play marble from them computer. Sure. They fly kite from them computer. Okay. Them now go outside, go do nothing. It means, therefore, as a church, as one who has taught the subject in seminary and see and understand the variables to some degree, from the initial end of a dollar cent, so the, 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 the outer end, between the 13th and the 19th, thereabouts. We call it the state of ambivalence. The changing processes take place halfway up there. The chemical imbalances, all of that is happening. A youth reach 15, 16. He has no father in the house, a mother. A mother cannot instruct a young man 16. He needs man. A man, a woman cannot father a son. True, true. Him. What we need to be established in church, and we have, I, I cited it earlier, and this platform cannot take this kind of conversation because time is already gone and my, my stomach is full. It's, it's, it's more than just spiritualizing and the Holy Spirit will help us. We need to be true to ourselves and true to some of these youth. We have injured them in the house and we come at church, come hinge them, and then feel like there is no place to go. House now help, church now help, so then go to the road. We come and we get in a spirit and we do all kind of thing and we talk all kind of something and we go to the house to talk all kind of something at them ears. And then see how we live. We come at church and live one thing. And when we do our yard, we do something else. What next thing, true, sir. An environment that is acidic and hostile. Them see what I go on out there, but they must see no difference when they go to them yard. And they hear the same thing at church. What do you think? In our days, it was not so prevalent. We have other outlets. We have to find a way. It's not a hopeless situation. We have to find a way, a ocean, a, a, a journey. And all those to put them in our context because father might not be there to talk to them in the right way. For our father no know how to talk to them either. We have a fine resourceful people in our church. We sit down with them and talk with them. Naked and not ashamed. A whole heap yeah. of masturbation, a whole heap of sexual overthrow, a whole heap of something. Who are talking about their masturbation? What are talking them about when they feel? Who in our church are talking to them about it? I make them feel like they're not. Out of road, them, 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 them can be helped. The bishop used to have masturbation problem. He used to have uh, all kind of something. Everybody, we are human beings. So we are treating them like we're the saints. Right. We walk up the floor and talk to them. So these are the issues that are driving them out of the place. They don't know how to keep the balance. And we are telling them to get saved and they don't know Jesus. I rest my case until we on another platform. All right, no problem. Valid point. All right, I'll take Sister Brianna. We'll wrap it up now. Sister Brianna? No, I'm good. Never mind that. All right, go, Taji. Taji, go. Good evening. Uh, many times we hear of these things that um, that we should come in certain groups and <clears throat> take them one by one to see what is really happening, you know, behind closed door and all of that. Each time we hear of this over and over and over. Not to say that some do not do it, not saying that, but the effectiveness of it is not reaching the core of the youth because either some start the journey and then it's like maybe the person who are they, they are counseling, you know, get them fed up or whatever. So you leave them 
out in the sea to drown. Countless of times it happens. And it just brings back that person, he or she, back to that same place that they are coming from. So it's somewhat difficult to deal with certain things in life as youth. You know, sometimes persons who you depend on to, to save things that, you know, it's meaningful to life and spiritual growth. It's not happening. How do you maneuver that? How do you bring back yourself? Yes, you pray, you fast, but there's some void in it. You know, how do you get over that part? All right, let me try see if I can answer that question. All right, first of all, you have to have a made-up mind. If you don't have a made-up mind to say, well, then I am coming from a background where it's abuse physically, mentally, emotionally, and there is no one there to help. Individuals are around us. We gain ourselves to the point where we say that we don't trust anybody. If we do not let out what is happening inside, how are we going to learn? It's not, yes, it's a matter of trust, but we have to let go of the issue of say, boy, I may not trust Sister Da, I may not trust Sister Dick to tell her my situation. But if you do not express your situation, how are you going to learn from your mistake, learn from the issues that are bothering you? Living with your parents as a youth, you don't have a father figure. Me, now I talk to my mother, say, boy, me have wet dreams, I mean, masturbate, or me have sexual urges. No, you're not going to feel comfortable in saying that to a female. You need a male figure, and male figures are in the church, but they decide that they do not want to share. I've seen where a lot of individuals inside our church that can help, and persons are pushing themselves away to say, boy, I may not trust nobody because I'm going to hear it back. So what if you hear it back? It's a stepping stone for you to learn and for you to move on. If I do not exp show, um, express myself or what I've experienced, always it's somebody else that is experiencing something similar to my situation is going to learn. So we have to put it on the board, lay it out, stop pushing things under the carpet, too much dust under the carpet, that will kill we. Time for the carpet, stop have a peer dirt, we fling out the carpet, put it on the table, lay it out real. Me have an issue with fornication, me have an issue with uh, masturbation, me have an issue, me love sex, me have an issue, lay it out. Someone who had experienced it before can speak about it and say it to you in a way for you to understand, knowing that it can help. Don't go around and say, boy, it's a person now going help me. How would you know if you do not speak? The problem lies within us. We have to change our mindset. If our mindset not change, we're not going to get no help. Yes, the Holy Spirit is there to lead us, but sometimes we push the Holy Spirit away because we want to own a thing. We want to go out there, we want to wear the tight up clothes and reveal our bodies. We want to drink, we want to party. That's what the young people are into. We can party in a church just the same. We can go drink the grape juice. We don't have to want to drink Campari and smear of ice and them something there. No. We can party see and we're not the house, come with creative ideas and party and enjoy ourselves. It makes no sense for us to stifle the good that we have. And then when something about us, if me did know, the if and the would and should have now helped the situation. We have to make a stand and stand up and say, listen, I'm having an issue. I need help. They're going to seek help. Because if you don't seek help, that will cause mental problems. You get schizophrenia. We are going to end up at war 21. Bellevue full, them are run out mad people. Where are they going to go when they don't express how they feel? Sometimes we have to let things go and let God have his way. Many forums are there. We are using the children are using the gadgets. And they might use it to do good at times and to do bad. When they might do the TikTok, they now do the TikTok and I sing a song about Jesus or sing about the scripture that they learn. No, a TikTok about garbage. Post up on Instagram about garbage. Post positive stuff about Christ. Do it in a creative way. These children, they know about gadget more than any one of us. So let us not sit back and think that, oh, 
you may not trust Tom Dick and Harry, I may not tell Tom Dick and Harry nothing. Lay it out. How are you going to get help if you don't lay it out? Put it on the table. If you already know what I will mash down the table, make it mash down the table. We can make it back. But we have to leg some stuff and get it off our chest. All it needs up inside and I blame church members, I blame church leaders for say, boy, this is smart in our help me. Whatever. Yes, young people, their mind is made up to say whatever they want to say. If you tell them, say, listen, don't go down the road, you know, because my dog don't they go bite you. I better tell them go on. And they want to go down to themselves to make the dog bite them because they want to experience it. And for me, I would say, make them go and make the dog tear them up. When the dog tear them up now, they have to nurse their wounds. Sister, um, Sister Fuller. Yes, but I said something. It's, um, when we um, tell some of the church members about our situation and we hear it again. That for me, you know, I, that happened to me once, and from that day, from that day, I still don't trust that person because I heard it again. I mean, I feel but tell that person about my story that happened in the past, and me, if me tell her, no, me I feel that way. I mean, I'm comfortable around my church member. Although yes, it's saying that the Bible, you must um have fellowship with the, uh, with the Lord and it, within the Lord, but it feels like. I don't have I don't have the trust. I don't get the trust from them, and it, it can be heartbreaking. That's why people ask, why am I so sad? Because I don't trust around them because they broke my um my heart like more than two times, and it's just I don't trust people. The only person me trust is um God and some of my friend them. All to my best friend them, my best friend them. All them tell them certain something. Them not tell nobody else. Nobody else, I'm gonna trust them more than even more trust them more than my mother, I'm gonna more than my church members. I even more Catholic. that's why I don't really feel comfortable with telling certain things to certain people. But if it's like somebody that is within my um my age group, I feel more comfortable, I feel more willing. So that's everything you yeah, and you can say, like put it out there, they hear it again. Yeah, I say as the life goes. Something it can really hurt the person. It can really hurt the person and cause and cause um trust issues. And for me as a teenager, I do have trust issues. Thank you. That's understandable. Can I say something? Go ahead. Um, you made a statement that what if they speak? What if what I confide in them? about a certain situation, but yet still they come outside of that private closet to say why better Kingston, this says so and so and so and so. How do you think such person would feel when I say I confide in Brother Kingston that this is my problem? How do I go about fixing this problem? What are the spiritual things that I can do to maneuver this? And then you come back to hear Brother Kinson saying, coming into the public domain to say, boy, you know, say, Brother Saint Elizabeth at this and that and that. For me personally, everybody's supposed to know me. I have persons who I know I can call any minute, any time to talk to about things and all of that and all of that and all of that. Them know themselves. But yet still I find myself with other persons who seemingly, quote unquote, seemingly have my back. But at the end of the day, at the same person have the knife and they might tap me up in the back and they might do ass out. These are the things as youth we struggle with. Some because not saying that we don't do the thing, you know. Sometimes we fully do the thing and we don't say, after doing this, something is going to happen. Not to say that that doesn't happen. But instead of correcting us, you bash us. And then when we left the church you now, you say, boy, a long time. You know, say, brother, send to this bed where I'm going, you know. A long time. Instead of encouraging us to say, you know, brother, Sister, no. What would God do? Look at David. So many things David do. David wasn't perfect, 
But at the end of the day, David was a man of God's height. David stumbled so many times, but yet still, David confined with God to get answers. But sometimes we try to confine with others and it's a failure. And then when we confide to unsafe friends, we are now spending more time with the darkness than the light. Point taken, brother, sir. Let me, let me end the wrap up this. Right? Yes, please. Wrap up. Which one of us on this platform and on the Facebook platform has never ever been placed in that position on a consistent? It's the journey of life. It's a practical aspect of life that practically every one of us that are here have experienced. The best of friends and for a preacher, we get the, 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 the slap in the face more than anybody else. Somebody will come to my office and will say something to me in private. In the public proclamation, it has nothing to do with what was discussed in the office because what was discussed, discussed in the office is something that is affecting just about everybody else. That's part of the human endeavor. So there is no, nothing that is exclusive. You are experiencing it in your closet, but many, many, many others are experiencing the same thing. All right, how do we resolve this? First thing first, are you a Christian? Do you really want to serve God? Yes. Where Oshin is concerned, you want to tell me the entire church, you don't trust the entire church? Something is wrong with that paradigm. Somebody hurt you? The Bible gives you a platform. That one is either you want to go to the person, have a conversation, have a conversation. The whole church didn't hurt you. You cannot go to those who are in a worst case scenario, who are not a part. The darkness to have trust issue are trust fear because that is totally out of the context. That doesn't help the situation. So you what we're going to know. We're going to sit down, talk. We're going to, have to come to grips with where we are. Sit down and be willing within the forum that is established. You are hurt. We have a confession mode. Where we just apologize to each other, confess to us one to another, pray one for the other that we may be healed. We can't keep up that whole grudge, that whole thing in us, and expect to survive. So, find a forum. Don't go outside of the church, guys. It's not there. It is not there. It's a fallacy. It's not out there. It is within the context of the community. Community of problems. Make we sit down. I know the problem. He, she, and the whole lady. And fix them and don't give no room to the devil to mock us. This guy I'm done tonight. Not I rest time. my case. All right. I'll take the last verse of Sister Candice and then we'll wrap it up. Sister Candice, you have one minute. Yes. Uh, what, at the beginning, at the end of it all, um, I can say for sure you have to know God for yourself, especially as a youth. If you don't know God for yourself, you, you, go to, you go through the door. And I always tell persons, it's not church. You don't come to church, you come to God. Because the reality is, all of us will get hurt by somebody, even especially, especially among the leadership. You will get some leak that you will never expect. But you know, say, if you're trusted, if you live for God, if, you're, if God, you make God your focus, you can make it. And may I tell you that from experience, I've gotten some hits in church. I have gotten some heat and some fear of it too. But it's the grace of God that keeps me from going on the same way. So when I come to church, I don't even look at nobody. God said, don't make nobody stop you. Raise your hand. I'm me your comfort, nobody else. Raise your hand. Worship me because it's me your comfort. So the energy that encourages me, young people, you're going to get hit along the journey. But guess what? So some people we expect to really help you. You're going to get some big lips. I'm serious, I'm really big late. I would never expect it. But guess what? When you're back to yourself, you can make it. You can stabilize. You can 
remain in Christ and you can push forward. Because at the end of the day, a God will want to be want to be, and a God the intent to serve. And a God will want to the end of the day. Not church people, God. Not anyone, God. So my encouragement is to young people, keep a focus on God and you can make it. You can go forward, you can thrive, and you can make God very proud, no matter the circumstance. And I can tell you that. God bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. One more question to be answered. Just one more, and that's it. Who are you posing the question to Brother O'Shane? Um, I don't know. I'm general. I don't know, but just want to say it and get any answer towards it. Okay. All right. So this question did get my mind for a long time now. May I ask why do some Christians jump to the conclusion of saying the devil is a liar without hearing our final point? Depends on certain um situation or certain uh, things that we say our conversation. Some Christians like like them love to jump on the conclusion and say the devil is a liar. The devil is a liar. Some then listen and hear, then respond, but some just jump to it and say, the devil is alive, we don't hear finish uh, what we are saying. So sometimes it just annoyed me. Sometimes it really annoyed me. So may I just ask, what we can do? What, what, what we can do for the uh, prevent that from happening to me? I didn't hear the last part. What can you prevent that from happening to you? Yes, because I don't know. <laughs> Councillor Deacon is mostly one of our sir, you're taking it. Sir, sir, taking it, sir, I'm you. Sir Ocean. Yes, sir. I'm going to tell you the truth of the matter. All right. Not because it's to some persons look like adults, meaning that they're mature. I don't realize. The statement that you make doesn't come from somebody who is mature and understand the situation. It's not everybody that you see in a big man with pants and shirt than treat with some situation. So when you hear some things, you have to learn for just, let, like, like something, let them run off of your back. Don't get them in your skin. Don't let them penetrate your core. Because mm -hmm. such situations, it is absolutely nonsense. What, what it is that devil, devil is going to be rebuked at the blood of Jesus, what, 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 that's nonsense. <laughs> so son, yes, sir. I'm simply saying to you, push beyond those things. I know you're struggling with a trust issue, but you have to push beyond them and learn to articulate. I know everything you hear, you must get make it under your skin. Because some people now have no sense with you. I mean, I tell you that <laughs> up front. But you can't put everybody in the same bag. Because I every. Everybody tell us that the blood of Jesus gets you strive and become a man of worth. Remember that. Remember me tell you that. All right, okay. All right, sir. This has been your issues live. Youth issues live to be continued. Stay tuned to the church's Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, and notice board for when part two will be coming out. Because this definitely need a part two. You committee, I encourage and charge you. So go sit and plan again and speak with the leaders of our church to see how soon we can have youth part two of this session. It is needed, greatly needed. And youths, I encourage you in church to know God for yourself. Build a, build your relationship with Jesus. Read your Bible, pray, see the face of God that you remain stable in him. That's the only way that you're going to survive is if you know Jesus and experience him for yourself. But Lamar, Larry Graham, I want to thank you for joining us tonight as our guest panelist. You did well, sir. We will definitely contact you for part two to all our Facebook viewers, YouTube viewers, our friends on Instagram and Bridging. Thank you for making it Youth Issues Live. We continue to pray one for each other. But Larry, I'm going to give you two minutes to close us out with a song and then you pray for us. Amen. Over to you, Brother Larry. Uh, praise the Lord. Uh, wonderful discussion. I am blessed to have Bishop's wisdom. I'm really blessed that I really thank God for um, for him. I'm going to sing um, what that song is. I love you, Lord. Oh, your mercy never fails me. And all my days I've been held in your hand. 
from the moment that I wake up until I lay my head, oh, I will sing of the goodness of God. I love your voice. Thank you, Holy Spirit. You have led me through the fire in darkest nights. You are close like no other. You see, I've known you as a father and I've known you as a friend and I have lived in the goodness of God. And all my life you have been faithful. Oh, thank you, Lord. And all my life you have been so, so good. With every breath that I am able, oh, I will sing of the goodness of God. Oh, I will sing, thank you, Lord, of the goodness of God. Yes, I will sing of the goodness of God. Let us pray, believers. Father, in Jesus' name, you are good and your mercy endures forever. You are faithful and you are ever true. Lord, we thank you tonight that as members of the body of Christ, we could gather over this platform and to discuss those matters that are pertinent to our spiritual growth and development. We are so grateful, God, for the wisdom that you have inspired, Lord Jesus, tonight. I want to thank you, God, that this space, even though the concerns came, this space never became toxic. There was love permeating. There was peace permeating. There was joy permeating, oh God, and we thank you. We thank you, Lord. We thank you for your goodness. And so we pray tonight, Lord, that you will help us to reflect on your words. Lord, you changed my life with your word. You will help me to see the world through the lens of your word, your word. And I know, God, that you can still do it for others. I pray, Holy Spirit, that you will help us all to find time for your word so we can gain the knowledge of Holy Scripture, to interpret Holy Scripture and to apply Holy Scripture. I ask you, Jesus Christ of Nazareth, that Lord, you will, up, you will cause your word to heal our wounds. Hallelujah. You will cause your words, Lord, to heal our wounds. To, to, to deal with our sensibilities. For Lord, many a time and oft we are just sensitive because social media has presented for us a false world, a false state of living. God in heaven, help us to, be, to remember, Lord, that not everything on the social sphere, the social platforms are, are, are worthwhile. They are not healthy teachings, Lord. Help us to remember that even though social media says everybody is our enemy, it is a false ideology. God help us as believers to let our light shine before men. Oh, glory to God. Glorify yourself through us, oh God. Help us to be the salt and the light that you have called us to be. And help us, Lord Jesus, to have better relationships with you. Oh, gracious King, bless Bishop Lord. Continue to bless him with wisdom. Oh, Lord, my God, such wonderful insight you have inspired him to share. And I ask you, Holy Spirit, that even as you continue to use him to teach this body of believers, that Lord, they will give him the respect, oh God, that is due as their teacher and leader that, Lord, you have instituted. Bless this body of believers as we look to you tonight and we tell you thanks. 
in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And amen. Amen and amen. Bless God. Sister Aris, are you online? I know she was having some internet trouble. Sister Aris? All right. No, Sister Aris. We continue tomorrow. The final night. We start off at 6 p.m. online and in the assembly for those persons going in house. Come ready to praise the Lord. Come with your praise and your testimony. Tell all this week I've blessed and touched you what you have learned and what God continue to do. Continue to share and put up on your status and share with the world so that persons can join in and they too can be blessed. With that being said, have a good night. May the good Lord bless and continue to keep you. And we will see you tomorrow, God willing. Until then, have a good night. Good night to everyone.